Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and this is the thing, at their core, games are indeed games. An agreement between the developer and the player in which they actually want you to see things through to the end, because at the end of the day, that's how you make a successful title. But these games here clearly didn't get the message, as they actively try to take you down when you're doing well. So let's take a look at them, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that punish you for doing well. Number 10. Skill-based matchmaking ruins the fun for casual players. Call of Duty. So Call of Duty may be one of the most popular multiplayer video game franchises, and say it with me kids, of all time! But a large portion of the player base absolutely loathes the series' use of skill-based matchmaking, or SBMM for short. Now in theory, SBMM ensures that players are continually lobbied up with opponents of a skill level that is approximate to their own, basically making sure that players meet other players in accordance to how they've been performing. But in practice, SBMM often ends up punishing players who have just one or two above average games, only to quickly find themselves flung into a server filled with high-skilled veterans. Now, while this isn't really an issue for competitive or hardcore players, it severely penalizes casual players who just perhaps only jump on for a few rounds every now and then, as after a few well-played games, they'll end up being thrown into the deep end. Now, SBMM has always been controversial with COD fans, but it's an especially major bone of contention in the recent Black Ops Cold War, because its implementation was aggressive enough that some players have reported quitting the game entirely because of it. Ouch. Number 9. Reach M. Bison without a KO and fight Akuma instead. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo has a hilarious air quotes reward for players who manage to fight their way through to the arcade mode's final boss M. Bison without using a single continue and also achieving a high score and doing so in just under 25 minutes. If you satisfy all of these mad conditions, then just as M. Bison prepares to fight you, he'll be knocked out by Akuma, who will take his place as the final boss. Now, cool as it might seem, Akuma is obscenely strong and basically capable of reading your movements and performing devastating attacks which will make short work of most unsuspecting players. And to heighten the intimidation factor, he also shows up to the fight without a name or a portrait by his life bar. While players might be at first excited to see him, as playing well to unlock this secret boss is its own reward, you then realize it's your only reward as, after seconds of taking him on, that excitement will change to frustration as your face is floored into the ground again and again. Number 8. Bonus chapters are only unlockable by killing your own unit. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon now, it's totally common for RPGs to set various conditions for players who wish to reach secret areas and play optional missions, generally requiring them to go the extra mile in pursuit of that precious extra content. But Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon bafflingly goes in the opposite direction entirely, as most of its Gaiden chapters can only be accessed if you've got less than 15 characters in your entire army. As a result, players with a large roster will effectively be locked out from playing these chapters, in turn encouraging them to literally get the majority of their army killed on purpose. Given that the series has been historically concerned with creating a bond between players and their army and encouraging them to protect their units at all costs, this feels massively against the tone and unsurprisingly proved quite controversial. Number 7. Being wealthy gets you the greedy ending. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is a ludicrously challenging survival horror FPS, such that players shouldn't really be criticized for hoarding their resources and scavenging every everything they possibly can. And yet, the most frugal and money-minded of players who make it to the end of the game with their coffers intact will actually end up receiving perhaps the most insulting of the game's seven endings. The so-called greedy ending is given to players who have more than 50,000 rubles to their name before triggering the end sequence. At this point, they're forced to watch an entire video where the protagonist asks the wish granter for huge wealth, and while he first appears to be showered in coins, they're actually nuts and bolts of the ceiling causing the roof to collapse and crush him to death. Given that the game encourages cautiousness, it's little surprise that most players end up receiving this ending the first time, which feels like a bit of a slap in the face after slogging your way to the end, right? Number 6. The difficulty meter makes combat harder as you perform better. God Hand Cult classic PS2 beat-em-up God Hand features a rather unusual riff on typical dynamic difficulty mechanics, because unlike the overwhelming majority of games, the calculations are not hidden behind the scenes in this game's code. Rather, there's 
a literal meter at the bottom left hand corner of the screen which displays your level, and this level changes depending on how well or how poorly you're handling the combat. As you land attacks without being hit, this meter will fill up from 1 to a potential 4th level called Die, and receiving damage will cause it to drop down again. Now, Earlier levels won't allow enemies to attack unless they're in your line of sight, while in later stages of this mechanic they can attack you from any vantage point and are also strong enough to defeat players in just a few hits. It's an interesting mechanic because despite being a level meter, it does nothing to elevate the player's own stats as they rise up through the ranks, instead simply attempting to balance the difficulty in a bizarrely upfront way. Now, players are used to being manipulated by invisible difficulty adjustments, so seeing it so blatantly implemented right in the player's face has been both a source of fascination and infuriation. Number 5. The Nemesis Gun Loses Power If You Level It Up Cave Story The Nemesis is one of the last weapons that you can unlock in Cave Story, and it is an absolute belter. A gun capable of dealing high levels of damage while also coming complete with unlimited ammo. That is, if you don't bother to level the weapon up, because unlike every other weapon in Cave Story, the Nemesis actually becomes less powerful the more you level it up, and at level 3 will only fire rubber ducks, which deal a pathetic amount of damage. Given that you only need 1 XP to level up the Nemesis, the developers were clearly having a little fun with the players here, encouraging them to inadvertently nerf one of the game's best weapons in the pursuit of what they assumed to be progress. Number 4. Surviving longer in the opening fight skews the game's difficulty Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice The first major combat encounter in Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice sees the player battling a seemingly unending wave of respawning Northman warriors. And that's because the fight is actually scripted to be unwinnable, and you can save yourself both a ton of time and a massive headache later on by just letting yourself die in record time. But those who put up a mighty fight against these warriors while playing on the dynamic auto difficulty will see the game immediately adjust to their strong performance, starting players on a high level of difficulty from the offset. You can obviously help bring the difficulty down by just getting yourself killed a few times, but given that persevering through the fight is an easy mistake to make, it's pretty outrageous that those playing on auto difficulty then have to start the main game at something of a massive disadvantage. Number 3. Hitting level 99 unleashes a devastating glitch – Fantasy Star 4 so Fantasy Star 4 is an especially curious title, given that, unlike every other game on this list, its punishment is in no way intended by the developer. Basically, the RPG shipped with a glitch which affected players who level any of their characters to level 99, resulting in party members randomly swapping stats or losing skills entirely, and even nerfing characters by dozens of levels while still displaying level 99. Though the bug was fixed for some re-releases, anyone playing the original version effectively had their hard work thrown back in their bloody face. Given that you don't actually need to be level 99 or anywhere near close to beat this game, it's been suggested by some fans that this glitch may have been included on purpose to punish power levelers. But the simplest solution is usually the right one, so it's far more likely that this was nothing more than an unfortunate accident. Still, it stings quite a lot. Number 2. The Blue Shell Attacks First Place Mario Kart Need I say more about why this punishes people who are doing well? I mean, just look at this footage, look at it, and weep, my friends. Ow. And number 1. Realm Divide Pits Everyone Against You Total War Shogun 2 Total War Shogun 2 is a fantastic game, albeit one that also includes the somewhat controversial Realm Divide mechanic, where players who end up controlling a large amount of the available territory or manage to capture Kyoto will become the enemy of, well, everyone. When Realm Divide is activated by reaching a certain level of fame, every other non-allied clan will team up to take you down, while your relationship with allies and vassals becomes fractious enough that they'll likely turn on you in due course. Realm Divide can often be triggered when players are far from being able to take on the might of numerous large forces like this, nor shoulder the economic burden of your trade operations suddenly being obliterated. Though the mechanic makes a certain amount of strategic sense that the non-dominant parties would combine their forces to take out the overarching threat to their power, it still results in players receiving a punishment that does not measure up to the actions they've taken thus far. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that punish you for doing well. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can chat to me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. But great to see you over there. But you know what, my friend, before I go, I'm not going to punish you for doing well because we should all be treating ourselves as best we possibly can both physically and mentally, and I hope that you are having a good day and achieving your life goals, my friend, because you are a massive legend. You deserve love, happiness, and success. Now go out there and absolutely smash it today. As always, I have been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon.